This is the DeForest Crosley Model 51. As you can see it is a two-tube set and I'm going to go through the regeneration circuit or regen circuit of this radio. This is the wiring diagram for this radio. It has two tubes they're labeled V1 and V2. Some of the other major components are L1, that's the antenna coil. L2 is the tickler coil. T1 is the audio transformer. R2 is the rheostat for the filament. It also controls the volume. R1 is the grid leak resistor. That's the item that uh, is in that glass tube. This picture shows the DC biasing of the grids of both tubes starting with V1 goes through R1, the grid leak resistor, down through part of the antenna coil and down to ground. Now V2, it just goes through the secondary of T1 to the C battery on the minus side for biasing. This picture shows the tuning in this radio. C1 and L1 are the tuning units and depending on where they're set rings in the different parts of the AM band. Now that energy is picked off just under C1 and it travels through C2 onto the grid of V1. This is what the antenna has brought in and gets transferred to the grid of V1. The carrier part is the colored part and the information that we're interested in is the wiggly lines at the top and the bottom. That's the audio information. But at this point in time, notice that it's a mirror image. So if you go from point to point from zero positive and then negative, everything adds up to zero right now. Okay, I'm going to touch the plate of that first tube. You can see that there's quite a bit of carrier there. This is the regen part of the radio. That signal that's on the grid of V1 is amplified and comes out on the plate which goes down to the bottom of L2 and as that magnetic field expands cutting across L1 it gets fed back in phase or positively back onto the grid and it can do this oh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about a thousand times so it's a, a very high gain amplifier. V1 besides amplifying the new RF that's coming in and the feedback it also detects the audio and we can see that at the top of L2 because if you take a look at the red lines that's the RF at the top and we don't want RF there so it is being drained off by the RF bypass capacitor C3 
and if we take a look at this point we'll see mostly audio. Pretty much just audio. There is a little bit of carrier there. Here I'm just looking at the audio path. From the plate of V1 to the bottom of L2. Now since this is audio it has little or no effect on L1 goes up and over to T1 at that point it gets transformer coupled over to the grid of V2 and on the grid of V2 it is strictly audio then it gets greatly amplified and the output of V2 drives the loudspeaker. Okay, now I'm going to touch the other side of that audio transformer to the grid of the second tube. Definitely audio there. And no RF. So V1 is doing a great deal of work. It is amplifying the original incoming RF it's also amplifying the feedback from L1 and it's also detecting the signal which produces the audio signal that then passes through T1 and then gets amplified by V2.